Hello friends, welcome you all. I am Sundar from Symphonia Wealth. So this video is in continuation with the last video on how I took decision of selling my flat and what are the advantages of having sold my flat. So today in this video, I am going to tell you about the numbers behind it. So I am going to show you a very uh, interesting chart uh, which is nothing but a cash flow statement which tells me how much I have actually spent in terms of owning this house and how much I actually got in terms of selling the house. So the property what I sold was bought in 2010 for a cost of about 33 lakhs and I spent about another 3 lakhs on the interiors. When I bought the house it was under a loan so it was a 20 year loan but fortunately uh, I closed the loan in a three year period. So the interest what I actually paid for the house was about six lakhs or so. If I had continued the loan for 20 years, I would have actually ended up paying almost 20, 30 lakhs of interest. Fortunately, I could pre-close the loan in a three year period. So my total interest outflow was only six lakh rupees. Apart from that, I have also maintained the house in the last 10, uh, 11 years or so where I spent another 3 lakhs. These are just approximate numbers, but broadly to make you understand the entire deal. So the, to the total money what I had spent towards the house was about 45 lakh rupees. So what I got in turn after selling the house was about 40 lakh and 50 thousand rupees. So that's the amount which I got actually. But there was also a notional gain of rent received or the rent which I did not pay by being in the house, I would have saved about 13 lakh rupees because even if I had assumed a 10, 12 thousand rupees of rent over the last 11 years, I would have actually uh, ended up spending about 13 lakh rupees on the property. So if I just add that notional uh, gain also, 53 lakh and 70 thousand rupees or so, which means on a property which I spent about 45 lakhs, I have received about 53 lakh rupees or so which means I made a net gain of about and an absolute gain of about 8,70,000 including the notional gain over a 11 year period which means at a CAGR level it works to about 1.8% which means financially it is definitely not a great decision and on top of it just to understand I just paid about 6 lakh rupees on interest if I had just continued my interest then the entire numbers would have gone for a toss which means I would have actually made a negative uh, return on the flat which I bought. As we all know that even if I would have kept the money in a savings account or in a FD, I would have actually made much more uh, larger return than actually taking the trouble of buying the house, paying the EMI, etc, etc. And also on top of it, selling the house is not very easy. It took almost about one year for me to actually sell the house and I had to meet so many people, so many queries so many documents etc etc and eventually I made a return of less than 2%. So financially it is definitely not a great decision to own a flat unless you are very emotional about owning a house. Then I want to just highlight did I make any capital gain though on an absolute basis I made some kind of a gain but from an income tax point of view I have actually not made money because income tax allows you allows the option of indexing your property. So the property what I bought was in 2010. So if I had indexed that cost of 33 lakhs, today it is equivalent to about almost 64 lakh rupees, which means because of inflation, the cost of the property has actually gone up to almost, in fact, almost doubled to 64 lakh rupees, whereas I actually sold it for 40 lakh and 50 thousand rupees, which means from an income tax point of view, I have actually made a loss of about 24 lakh rupees. So there is no question of making money. In fact, I have uh, lost money from an income tax angle. EMI actually puts a lot of pressure in the individual's mind. We all know that if you have an EMI running, how difficult is it for you to manage that EMI month on month, irrespective of whether you are in an employment, whether there is a salary cut or anything for that matter, you are expected to pay the EMI whatever happens. Of course, rent also you, you are expected to pay, but assuming you lose your job, you can always move to a smaller house, cut down your cost and things like that. So that entire flexibility is there with you. So 
keeping in consideration on all the negatives of owning a property and other things which i already discussed financially it is definitely not a great decision so why am i bringing you all these points together if you are planning to buy a house or you have already bought a house these points can definitely make you start thinking so that you can actually take the right decision of moving your resource or channelizing your resource to achieve financial freedom first because when you have a family when you have children their education becomes the most important priority and then comes your retirement and things like that and then if you are still left with money maybe you can think of buying a house otherwise renting is a much more better option not only in terms of saving money it the kind of flexibility it can give you the kind of freedom it can give you i think renting can be a much better option so through this video i've just uh, want to bring you a thought to think that owning the house is not the only option for you in fact renting is a much better option so these are my personal uh, opinions but financially these are very valid one but i leave the decision to you but definitely consider these negative points also before even taking a decision of buying a flat hope you enjoyed this uh, video thanks for watching please do subscribe to our youtube channel symphonia chennai and please press the bell notification icon thank you for watching